Awesome. So next up, we have Paige Peterson, who works in the user education group at Zcash. And she's going to be diving a little bit into defense against counterfeit attacks in uh, Zcash itself. So uh, let's give it up for Paige while, again, we wait for the slides to come up. Test. Can you hear me? Cool. So while the slides are coming up, I'll do a brief intro. I'm Paige Peterson. I work for Electric Coin Company, which recently rebranded from Zcash Company. So apologies if I mess up because it was like literally last week. Um, the goal is to kind of separate the company away from the protocol um, so that other organizations and um, individuals are more empowered to uh, take lead in contributing to the network. Um, so I do user education there. Um, I've been working for the company for the past two years. Um, I was here last year on a regulation panel, which was fun. Um, and I guess um, as he's bringing those up, um, this is, I have a lot to cover in this literally 10 minute presentation on um, our anti counterfeiting defense. Um, so I'm going to probably be reading most of the content so I don't um, diverge and get distracted. It's a little different from my usual casual presentation style, but. Um, but you can, you know, feel free to connect with me throughout the day and reach out to me at page at z.cash if you have uh, questions. Can you pull your hair off the microphone? Uh-oh. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I gave the intro already. Great. Um, so, defending against counterfeiting attacks in Zcash. So in order to understand the bulk of the content, I want to quickly review fundamental components of Zcash. Zcash has two main types of addresses, transparent and shielded. Transparent addresses are essentially like Bitcoin addresses and do not provide any privacy protections. Shielded addresses implement ZK snarks to keep the addresses and the balances private from public view. Zek or Zcash uh, can be moved between shielded and transparent addresses, um, effectively shielding or deshielding the balance depending on which address um, type is sender and receiver. Uh, shield, shielded addresses can be further divided into two subtypes, Sprout and Sapling. Sprout addresses have existed since the launch of Zcash in October 2016, and Sapling addresses were introduced as the main improvement of the Sapling network upgrade, which activated on October uh, of last year. So because there are essentially three distinct address types, this means there are three value pools in which Zek or Zcash can be held. Um, all Zek held in transparent addresses are a part of the transparent value pool. All Zek held in Sprout addresses are part of the Sprout value pool. And all Zek held in Sapling addresses are part of the Sapling value pool. And the sum of all the pools is equal to the total amount of Zek in circulation. Um, I want to mention that actually um, transparent addresses are important because um, all Coinbase transactions and trans transaction fees go here first. Um, and that's important later on in the, in the presentation. So, um, while uh, the transparent value pool can be audited in the same fashion as Bitcoin and other non-private cryptocurrencies, both the Sprout and the Sapling value pools cannot because balances held in these shielded addresses are projected. With the aforementioned Sapling upgrade, however, a turnstile mechanism was introduced to support auditing the Sprout value pool as users move funds from uh, into the new and improved sapling addresses. So there are two levels to this mechanism. Um, uh, one being a user level mechanism and one being a consensus level mechanism. The user level mechanism refers to the Zcash DRPC, which prohibits any transaction from being 
uh, sent directly from a Sprout address to a sapling address and vice versa. Users must use a transparent address as an in intermediary, which will obviously expose the balance being uh, migrated. The consensus level mechanism, however, allows a direct sprout to sapling transaction to take place, but requires the balance be passed through the transparent value pool before landing in the sapling address, thus exposing the value without requiring the use of a transparent address. Because this may not be used obvious to users and therefore a privacy risk, a UX decision was made to limit the availability. Um, that said, a migration tool is under development uh, to make use of this consensus level mechanism that will allow users to automatically transfer funds held in Sprout addresses to sapling addresses without worrying about human error and attempts to maintain privacy. This, this tool is specified as a Zcash improvement proposal and is available for review publicly. So why is this important? Um, auditing the Sprout Value Pool is of high priority due to a counterfeiting vulnerability that was discovered in the ZK SNARK proving system that it used. Um, so as this slide uh, says, in March 2018, the electric coin company discovered a counterfeiting vulnerability in the cryptography underlying some kinds of zero-knowledge proofs. The counterfeiting vulnerability was fixed in the sapling network upgrade that activated on October 28, 2018. The vulnerability was specific to counterfeiting and did not affect user privacy in any way. Prior to its remediation, an attacker could have created fake Zcash without being detected. The counterfeiting vulnerability has been fully remediated in Zcash and no action is required by users. Um, so essentially, Sprout addresses were vulnerable and therefore if the vulnerability was exploited, the Sprout value pool would be inflated without any, uh, anyone but the attacker knowing. As of the sap sapling activation, uh, the Groth 16 proving system replaced the vulnerable construction that were, was previously used in Sprout addresses. So um, you can look into the details um, of the disclosure and everything, and that includes our strong beliefs that this vulnerability was not exploited. Um, but, you know, even if we have like 99.999% uh, belief that this wouldn't be, that this wasn't exploited, you know, we still need to take steps to prevent um, any harm for users as much as possible. So the details are in this blog um, at the bottom. You can take a picture or I guess the um, slides will be available for everyone afterwards. Um, so there are two there are two distinct ways to monitor the Sprout value pool in addition to the sapling value pool. Uh, via a third party tool like the ZK, Z Chain Block Explorer and Metrics website or locally in a Zcash node using the get blockchain info commands. While inflation of the Sprout value pool would not be detected for the value that stayed within it, because of the turnstile mechanism and the fact that all newly created Zcash are first sent to uh, the transparent value pool, any prior counterfeiting would be detected if the Sprout value pool had more funds that left than entered. Essentially, the value pool would show a negative value. So, uh, the, uh, now this is like essentially the defense that we're um, going to take against any potential counterfeiting in the Sprout value pool. The electric coin company supports a policy that deactivates a negative value pool by invalidating any of its outgoing transactions. This policy is to protect the total monetary supply at the expense of any remaining legitimate funds in the affected pool. To solidify this policy, a specified mechanism is being built as a consensus rule 
uh, to reject a block that would result in the pool becoming negative. And this is for both the sprouts and the sapling value pool, but the sprout value pool is much more um, important in this regard. This is an important rule to avoid the need for a chain rollback to protect the total circulating supply in the event that the vulnerability mentioned prior was exploited, albeit highly unlikely. Uh, finally, we have begun road mapping the steps needed to deprecate sprout addresses in the sprout value pool. Um, all of these links are kind of lead to more information about um, you know, the policy that we have, the implementation um, that's drafted in a Zcash improvement proposal, and um, the GitHub issue where we have a general outline of what we intend to do with sp Sprout deprecation. So in summary, audit auditing the total monetary supply in Zcash is impossible. To, uh, due to the private nature of shielded addresses. An auditing mechanism was introduced for funds that wish to transition from Sprout to uh, sapling addresses. This mechanism is ex extra important because there's a possibility the Sprout value pool was inflated due um, to the vulnerability that the electric coin company discovered last year. And the chance uh, the chance of this is small, but we need to address the issue regardless. In addition to monitoring the value pool via the sapling turnstile, a consensus rule is being introduced to prohibit the sprout value pool from going negative and deprecating the sprout, deprecating sprout is on the radar for the electric coin company engineering team. <coughs> Thanks. I think that was worth it. So again, we have time for one question before we, all right, that was a quick hand. Here. So assume in October that was a hard fork that happened, and yep. um, so how was that dealt with uh, encouraging uh, people running nodes from the network to switch without divulging the vulnerability? How, how, how did that transition happen? Uh, because sapling overall was a huge improvement. Um, there's a lot of details about sa the sapling activation in general, but literally the um, like the amount of improvement that sapling addresses are, have over sprout addresses are like way more significant. That it wasn't um, a big deal to convince everyone to switch over. And and, and with the switch, the sprout address, you're not allowed to send to sprout addresses. You can anymore? send to sprout addresses. That's a part of the deprecation roadmap. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, so Thank it's you. ongoing. Okay, awesome. Thank you Thank again you. so much, Paige. Uh, let's hear another round of applause for her.